NXT Vengeance Day 2024. It was a night of champions. It was a night of betrayal. And it was a trail of broken hearts that was laid out this evening on February 4th, 2023, excuse me, 2024 at Vengeance Day. I'm your host, Brian, the Hype Ballard, and we're getting back at it again, going over NXT Vengeance Day with our results, thoughts. I want to talk a little bit about the betrayal that happened tonight. We got some appearance by some demons and some promos. What does that mean? Could it be the side of Okada that you guys are thinking? A couple rules before we get started. I want you guys to remember that this is developmental territory. Two out of these five superstars must most likely will not make it on the main roster. This is training in progress. Those are always my disclaimers when I watch NXT. I tell myself they are in training for the WWE careers. Mistakes are going to happen. Nothing's going to be perfect. Commentators on the evening from Clarksville, Tennessee were Booker T, Vic Joseph, and Wade Barrett changing in and out during the broadcast. Let's get into our first matchup. And that is the Dusty Cup Final. Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker versus Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. Carmelo playing double duty tonight. He's going to go for the Dusty Cup and he's going to go for the NXT World Championship. This is the type of story that I tell you guys I like to see and that's what NXT does really well. They do a theme for the night that we're interested in. Book in storytelling. I talk about it over and over again. Book in storytelling. We open with a concept. Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams, will they get along? And we end with a concept of the same nature. I want to talk about the Dusty Cup Finals, and I want to give you guys a reminder of how prestigious this is. Former winners are the Creed Brothers, MSK, the Broserweights, Alistair Black and Ricochet, Adam Cole, baby, and Kyle O'Reilly, the Authors of Pain, and Finn Balor with Samoa Joe. That's right, the AEW champion Samoa Joe. We're all winners of the Dusty Classic Tournament. Can't believe it's been going on for that long. We're going to add another pair of names to that this evening. We start this match off, and Corbin and Braun, they promised a special entrance tonight, and they brought it. They both rode motorcycles to the ring. Baron Corbin goes through the most gimmick changes that I've seen any guy in a WWE career. Tonight he looked a little bit like a Little Red Riding Hood meets Harley Davidson. Got his hood up, trying to steer the motorcycle to the ring. And seemingly he starts to jam his knee a little bit, but he and Mello send Corbin to the outside and Trick follows with a crossbody off the apron. The camera misses a move where Mello does inside and he gets a one and a two. Braun press the slams mellowed tricks um, into tricks arm and then he gets German suplex trick which makes him do a fall away slam on the mellow Braun then assists Baron with a dive to the outside and that has the crowd just going get ready get going right back inside Corbin gets going and he gets to the two count and a deep six on trick who is bleeding from the mouth at this point kind of see that throughout the night with trick but ultimately Braun busts a swanton out Onto his opponent on the outside. And the Wolf Dogs, as they're called, are pulling at the, out all the stops for this one. Trick and Mello cut off the stereo moves on top. And then Mello hits Braun with a super front suplex. Mello's finisher is cut off. And Trick botches a neckbreaker on Barry. Braun then charges in. Hits Mello with a spear as Trick steps outside. And it almost looked like Mello took the spear for him, something we would confirm later in a promo. He was saving. We'll find out that he was actually saving Trick Williams because he had to save his energy. Being a good friend knew that the bigger game was for him to get the NXT Championship. Your winners, though, with that spear is going to be Baron Corbin and Braun Baker. They are going to be the new Dusty Cup Finals winners. The Wolf Dogs get it done. And they add their names to a long list of Dusty Classics. It's interesting WWE opened up with the Dusty Classic. 
the fans behave themselves tonight, especially with everything going on in the Cody Rhodes land. We'll find more out about that on Thursday at the press conference. But for now, we do get the Dusty Classic finished up here on the men's side with the win. Up next, we get a disqualification, a no disqualification match with Joe Gacy and Dijak. It's interesting on this one. Each guy, they bust out a weapon right in the beginning, a police baton and a lead pipe at the bell, and Dijak levels him then with a lariat early. Gacy kicks out just with a quick one count, though. Dijak looks a bit surprised. Dijak's an interesting uh, build up in this character here. Um, I like the placement of this matchup. I like the fact that they led right in with a tag team matchup with a story focused, and then they followed right up with a no DQ match. I'm okay with that. Keep the crowd going hot. You know, we're going to have a break in the middle of this thing, but we got to have, you know, the guys excited for NXT Vengeance Day. This matchup has all kinds of weapons set up. They set up tables. They bring out... Uh, Gacy sets up a table at one point. He brings out a crate of toys. Whoever brought their toys to work, maybe they brought their kids to work day and it was their kids' toys. But he places toy soldiers on the table. And then he pours them. He acts like he's going to shoot, die jack with them. But then he puts them all out there with Legos and everything. The announcers do a good job of trying to sell the concept of you ever step on a Lego at 4 in the morning in a dark room. It does hurt. So they're really trying to give you an idea of what these guys are about to go with. So he pours them all out on the table, but Dijak avoids that part of the match. He doesn't go through the table, and he turns the tide. And again, every angle from Dijak is met with laughing from Gacy. He gets left in a trash can at one point. Gacy is in a trash can in the ring, and Dijak drops an elbow on him. But Gacy uses the trash can to run like a barricade straight through and hit Dijak despite you know not being able to see a thing. As they head to the outside, Dijak wants a springboard move, but Gacy shoves him back in, and he sends him through the table with the toys on top of it. Somehow, Dijak, though, is back up pretty quickly, and he gets back inside, and he hits a choke slam on a chair for a one and a two. Dijak nearly lands on the trash can on a big spot from the top, and he lands really rough. Gacy shouts that this is his playground, and he wraps duct tape around the eyes to blind Dijak in this matchup and wails on him with kendo sticks. And I'll tell you what, I've never seen that done. Duct tape being wrapped around his head as a blindfold right into the eyes of Dijak. And it's interesting, I was getting vibes of WrestleMania 7 going through me with Jake the Snake Roberts and Rick the Malo Martel in their blindfold match. But ultimately, we look here, we got the duct tape around his eyes and then he gets hit. Despite being blinded, Dijak manages to grab Gacy enough to hit him with his finishing to feast your eyes. However, he can't find him to make the cover. A la WrestleMania 7. And that allows Gacy to hit a top rope splash onto a chair for another near fall. Gacy hits the ropes and Dijak is able to see with the assistance of the referee getting that duct tape off. And he hits him with the nightstick and then goes for the win with the feast your eyes once again. Gacy smiles as he's down and defeated at the 11 minute, 56 second mark. Dijak is your winner. It was the right call, the right winner here. I don't know why, but I've been seeing a lot of Dijak's posts on my social media lately. It's pretty cool though. It's kind of drawing me into them. Um, and this matchup did its job. It didn't you know, stay around too long, but it got the job done quick, efficiently, kept the crowd moving. And I tell you what, it gave me something I didn't see before with the duct tape. So I was really liking that aspect. I got a little worried when they brought out the toys. I'm not going to lie. I got a little worried they're going to go Christmas crazy on me. And make it like a Christmas tree match. Um, but ultimately, it wasn't a Christmas tree fight. No Christmas trees. We were good. We avoided that. This is Valentine's Day. Box of chocolates would have been more appropriate. However, that's fine. We go ahead. We got the duct tape spot. I like that. I like the match. And we're moving on. And moving on, we shall. We've got the six-person tag team matchup. And I'm proud to say I was able to get this one in our weekly picks on the Wrestling Fans Insight. And I did say that the family would win this matchup with the tag champs kind of protecting that brand. The family rarely loses on PLEs. 
you go back, you guys look at their record. There's not too many times where the family that I can recall when I've watched NXT where they've lost in a major event. So, uh, we get some entrances, right? We get um, kind of a Grand Theft Auto type entrance from OTM. But ultimately, kind of reminded me with the bicycles more like Hunico and, uh, yeah, I want to say Camacho from years ago. But ultimately, uh, we get the women clashing inside. We get some inside-outside action on this one. And then the men get tagged um, back in. So at that point, we get the girls. We get the guys. Um, Tony and Rizzo argue a bit, but they get back on track as Tony hip tosses her into Parker. And then he gets launched himself to give an upper hand. A distraction from the scripts gives OTM the upper hand, though. As Stax gets worked over, Stax gets isolated and pierced. Um, just wails on him with huge shots. Scripps gets another cheap shot on the outside. Stax finally makes a hot tag to Don, who fires off clotheslines in a belly-to-belly -belly and a suplex. Parker enters to a slap Tony and stop his momentum. That brings in Rizzo to tackle her from the outside. Tony checks on Stax, and he hip-tosses him on top of OTM on the outside. Rizzo follows with a frog splash onto the crowd. Back inside, Tony D'Angelo picks up the win with a Fisherman Buster for the one, the two, and the three. Your winners here is the family, as mentioned, at the 10-minute mark. Very quick matchup, quick hot tag action. It was good to have the no DQ match breaking up these two tag matches. So that way it didn't seem too, too similar with a back-to-back -back tag match. So I like the call here. And we're three matches in to WWE Vengeance 2024. And speaking of getting in, I just want to say thank you guys for everything you guys do from here on the channel. If you like what you see, hit that like button. It really helps me out. Appreciate the favor. Appreciate you guys doing that for me. Um, if you are back again, thank you for coming back. And if you aren't, if this is your first time, consider subscribing. All right, let's go on. You guys can follow me over on Twitter X at the Brian Adkins. Uh, we host weekly spaces, which I'll talk about later in our uh, fans of pro wrestling.com let's go get in all right so then we've got the women's championship match we got laya valkyria versus roxanne perez i'm gonna be honest with you guys i wasn't excited about this matchup i talked about it on wrestling fans insight but i will say um you know it just felt stale to me the build-up felt stale we all kind of chatted about it but this matchup was placed dead in the middle of the pay-per-view, or the PLE. All right, that's fair enough. But ultimately, the match, as it started, and they're trying to, announcers are trying to do a job. They're trying to tell the story about how Roxanne Perez wants back this title. This is her title. It's the house she built, right? The only problem is, is this is a story that I was not wanting them to finish. We all want them to finish Cody's story. These are the kind of stories that I think we can move ahead from and move on. But regardless, it does give these two, as I said, training in progress, some more time in the ring before they move on to other things. And hopefully they get some good feedback on the match here. I'm not going to spend too much time breaking it down on this one, but I will say there was a point in the matchup where it just kind of dragged on a little bit for my liking. Overstayed its welcome, as I like to say. And then, all of a sudden, what do you do? You send in the Money in the Bank winner. And you say, cash in and let's add some excitement to this recipe we're cooking. But what the problem is, is you don't have the ingredients of a Money in the Bank winner. So what we get is Lola Vice coming in with a contract that she won from a breakout tournament. Which is essentially the Money in the Bank contract. Okay, but it's the breakout tournament guaranteeing you a contract for a title match. Making this now a triple threat match. And hopefully we can make this exciting. The announcers are trying to sell it very hard. So here's what I felt. I felt this money in the bank plan B here. Uh, the breakout tournament. It felt like Nickelodeon and Nick Jr. And tonight we got Nick Jr. Right? And we got some, you know, the younger version of the money in the bank. But... Regardless, Lola got in there and got some experience as well tonight with Lyra and Roxanne. Um, the announcers tried to sell it. It created a little bit of a close, but Lyra eats a spinny kick, and Perez rolls up Lyra for a one and a two and hits a Pop Rocks, having um, this old uh, count out. 
basically at this point, Tatum, Paxley comes out, takes her out, the obsessed fan. And then Lyra avoids a kick and hits Lola and wins with the night wish. So at the 13 minute mark. So at this point, we do get a Lyra Valkyrie um, retention of the NXT Women's Championship. And I'll be honest with you, I know they tried to save it with the interference match, and you know it was a good try to run interference. But I just felt like I was playing WWE 2K22 general manager mode, and I was just sneaking them in there trying to get some action and people to talk about it. But ultimately, the match, you know, it did its job. It got experience for the three girls. We're going to move on. We've got the NXT North American Championship up next. We do get a weird vignette that airs right before this matchup, though. And it basically talks about an old Japanese proverb where a man has three faces. One face of, that his family sees, one face that the world sees, and the other one that reflects his true evil that no one sees. And you guys are all talking about what that could be. Who that could be. I've heard everything from Uncle Howdy. I've heard you guys say Okada. It's Japanese program. Okay, I could see that, the Japan connection. Um, you know, I didn't, you know, had the blip on my radar. Is this could this be a repackaged Sean Spears? A repackaged Ty Dillinger doing something. Or it could be somebody we have not seen yet that we're getting ready from the NIL program to bring on over. That'll be interesting. I like this little spot because it gets us talking, and Twitter was talking about it all night long on it. So at this point, we get the North Americans. It's a drop kick. Ova's on the outside. And this match, as you can expect, is the big man versus little man type syndrome. They go to the outside. They're running out round, um, crashing around and into things. He hits a double stomp. They get back in. Um, Ova counters another movement into a big choke slam he dominates from nearly um and hits um a count out almost a count out at that point but lee gets in just at the nine count oba's choke slam backbreaker is a great spot too and it gets a one and a two but lee finds a way to survive and applies an octopus hold very nice in the middle of the ring while standing hits a nice octopus hold it's always good to see that and i think these big guys you know it's a good hold to throw on a guy like that to make it believable that Dragon Lee could win this. At that point, Ova from the corner and delivering a power bomb. And they should have gotten a little bit of a bigger crowd from that. I think they were still dead from the women's match. But like, you know, he won the tournament with that um, that actual move, I believe. Ova hit a huge running chop with Lee on the apron. He clears off the announce table. Lee seems to escape only for Ova to choke slam him onto one of the announcer tables then Lee gets one more spot inside but falls and he hits a pop-up power bomb and boom at the 10 minute 57 second mark Oba Femi is still your North American champion and like I said the NXT world they've got something special here with Oba Femi and I'm excited to watch more and actually I wouldn't mind seeing more of him taking on guys like Dragon Lee. Maybe there could be a match with Noam Dar in there in the future. I think those two might be able to put on something kind of fun to watch too, but I definitely think it's a matter of him wrestling the cruiserweights, guys that can kind of keep those, you know, working well together as they build up his training. Um, I don't want to see him anywhere near Braun Break or anybody like that for a long while. I want to see him build up correctly. I want to see him you know, develop a little bit of notoriety with this second title with the North American Championship. And I think it's in good hands with Ova Femi. All right, guys. And speaking of being in good hands, we got the fans of ProWrestling.com. Every Sunday, we host Takedown on Wrestling Fans Insight with John, Carlos, Will, Heather, the whole crew. We ultimately go through the weekly takes. Also, we got other great podcasts over there at the fans of ProWrestling.com. We got Ted's Takes over from YouTube and Spotify. Ted's a great supporter of this channel at Tap Out Talk, but we also have him on the Fans of Pro Wrestling Network. I want to tell you guys, we host weekly spaces on Twitter, but ultimately, if you guys have a podcast yourself and you're interested in getting in with a group, let us know. We're looking to acquire talent in 2024, and we're looking to add to our growth of over there at thefansofprowrestling.com, so check us out. 
All right, and we get into the main event. We've got NXT Championship on the line, booking storytelling from beginning to the end. We've got Ilya Dragunov versus Trick Williams. I predicted that Dragunov would retain this title tonight. It makes sense. The other story in this matchup is got to be Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes. They've been telling this story for a very, very long time. This is the Diesel Shawn Michaels breakup story. The big man protecting the little guy until no more. We get Melo at ringside. At first, there was debate through the night. Trick didn't want Melo at ringside, but then in a backstage promo prior to this match, he said, I want to have you there. He's like, I should do this with my friend. Oh, we know it's all done when people start talking about their friends. Think about AEW World's End, right? All about friendship. Tonight had some elements of that. I think that was kind of a little bit of a knock and a play. But Trick uses uh, ultimately his power early in the match for a body slam. And the crowd starts chanting, whoop, that Trick. They're getting into it. He wins uh, the next exchange with a drop kick. And at this point, earlier in the match, there's a point where Ilya Dragunov takes a shot to the face and he immediately starts bleeding. We also get another section pretty early in the match where Trick Williams starts bleeding. So I don't know if he busted open his mouth once again from that match earlier with the tag match for the Dusty Cup. But ultimately, uh, we go through and we get an H-bomb with the knee and then we get... Uh, the first 48 and then ultimately gives them an opening. Uh, we get some training of the blows in the center ring until Trick hits a couple of axe kicks. Dragunov fights back with a kick of his own, but the Constantine special is cut off as Ilja blocks the Urnagi and then the trade boots and Trick is leap hits a leaping lariat. Fast forward a little bit. Mello's looking worried on the outside. Dragunov and Trick Williams battle on the apron doesn't go well for Trick Williams but ultimately Carmelo is looking like shocked he's looking desperate he's like oh I want to help my friend he's really 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 trying to sell it I was getting a lot of Adam Cole vibes tonight from Carmelo Hayes maybe again that's just fresh on my mind but ultimately Trick avoids a torpedo Moscow later on and he hits a spinning kick for a near fall back in the ring a ref uh, bump and that also sees Mello gets taken out and leads to a trick knee as Trick gets the visual win. But a new ref arrives and Ilya kicks out. Ilya fights back with another big forearm and comes to the top with the H-bomb. But Trick gets the knees up on Ilya, a dragon off already again with that bloody nose. They face off in the ring across from each other and we get a trick knee attempt. And that sees the Torpedo Moscow hit instead. And it actually looks like they both hit each other. So Ilya covers to hit the one, the two, and the three. And Ilya Dragunov retains his NXT championship at the 17 minute and 57 second mark. Let's just call it 18 minutes. So at this point, Dragunov is your NXT champion. And that's the right move. Because the next matchup for Dragunov might be against a guy that won in a pretty good fashion tonight, and that might be Dijak. Would you guys like to see a Dijak versus Dragunov matchup? Maybe it's stand and deliver for the NXT Championship. I think I would. I think that's the natural progression to maybe where Dragunov can take his title reign. Ultimately, we then get the copyright logo coming up. Oh, the show's over, right? Nothing's happening. Wrong. Mello looks at Trick and then he goes behind him and he clips his knee and he then gets a chair and wails on Trick's knee as the crowd chants, fuck you Mello. Mello sucks. The crowd's hot. Mello sits in the chair over the body of Trick Williams betraying his best friend. And I could not again help Adam Cole, baby, vibes. Sitting in the chair, laying over his best friend's body in the ring. I think this was NXT and WWE's way of showing AEW, this is how you do this. Ultimately, though, we do get the end of the show. And we get the heartbreak moment. 
booked from the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, on how to betray your best friend and start a feud at the next month's PLE. And that will be stand and deliver near WrestleMania season. Guys, I want to talk about final thoughts. So here's where we're at. The next PLE, we got him. We've got Trick Willie. We've got Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams heading for a showdown at the biggest takeover, I'm going to call it, of the season. That is going to be stand and deliver NXT in WrestleMania season. So this matchup is definitely going to happen. It does not need the NXT championship. This matchup alone should be almost the main event in this point. It's one of those rare times where the championship might not be in the main event because these two are a little bit bigger than that now. So this is going to be a great story to watch as both of these guys, inner demons, come out. And what kind of match are we looking at? Maybe a cage match. Maybe a chairs, tables, ladders, and chairs match. Oh my. But let's talk about Ilya Dragunov tonight. I do believe he could be on a showdown for a title shot with Dijak. And I feel like those two styles would work really well with each other in addition to getting this other main event with Trick and Carmelo. Um, overall, I'm going to tell you guys, I will say, NXT Vengeance Day did not disappoint. And I, it was refreshing. It didn't overstay its welcome, like I like to say. It went through the progressions. The only match I really didn't care for was the NXT Women's Championship match, which I talked about. But I will say, you know, it was appropriately placed in the middle to where it didn't feel like it drained on me so much. And then I got excited in the beginning and in the end of the show. It just had that little dip in that moment. Well, guys, those are my final results and my final thoughts. Thank you guys for everything you do. I'm going to get out of here. And always remember... Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Appreciate each one of you. And it's not goodbye around here. It's just game over.